That's a little frustrating. Every story starts the same way. Hi there. Happy Wednesday. It's February the 12th, 2020, and I'm Eric talking at you once again from beautiful Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada, where it seems like people nowadays are willing to do whatever it takes for the environment, except to read a fucking book and learn something about it. <laughs> oh, ain't that the truth? <laughs> How's it going, Gord? Miserable. How you doing, buddy? Oh, just as good as a Ontario public school student. Um, <laughs> hi, world. Welcome to What If We're Right. Uh, if you're looking for a fair, unbiased, and reliable news source, this is not it. <laughs> I think unbiased we got covered. Everything else is, you know. <laughs> I say hi to Mike at Pit Lane Parlay, the number one racing and IndyCar podcast on the internet today with the Daytona 500 coming up this Sunday. You want to pay attention to what these guys have to say. Uh, go to Apple Podcasts, give them a five-star rating. Uh, head over to Eric and Gord, whatever, right, and do the same for us while you're there. Uh, I want to say hi to Alex and Tom, our Thor's Kin friends. Uh, very excited for their new venture. I uh, can't wait for me and Gord to be a big part of what they got going on because it sounds like a ton of fun. That it certainly does. That is enough of that for a minute. Wrong. Um, Gord, what's going on in your world? How you been? Um, every fear I had about working in a warehouse is coming back to haunt me. Um, um yeah. The only fear <laughs> I have would be of werewolves. I would, um, I would gladly face a wild pack of them right now. I in comparison actually, to what I did the warehouse thing not uh, uh, very briefly last year, or I guess yeah, it was last year. I I didn't hate it, but you're, it's not really your bag. No, well, keep in mind. I mean. I've worked in and out of various types of warehouses for 23 years, um, if not more, um, you know, before getting into doing sales and whatnot. The realization that I've come with when it comes to doing, going back to the warehouse, is that, now keep in mind, if there's anybody who I work with, um, you know, I'm sorry, but reality sucks. Um, for the most part, you're there for one of two reasons. One, you're in a situation like me where the work you want to do um, completely fucks up your entire personal and home life. Um, So you're trying to find something with a bit of balance. Or for the vast majority, you don't have the skills or brain power to do anything else. Yeah. Um, Although I'm sure a lot of the Filipino people that work in our warehouses are doctors and lawyers where they come from. It says a lot about doctors and lawyers in their country, doesn't it? Uh, no, we just don't <laughs> accept them here. Um, I find it just the only place I've done... Well, I, I worked very briefly in a warehouse in Calgary um, on an assembly line. That was magic. Um, and and again, in Vancouver, where just the, the, the dynamics in Vancouver are a little different. I don't know if they're the same where you are, but just in Vancouver English speaking Caucasians are not found often in that line of work and they're not exactly looked upon with a friendly eye Uh, it was very lonely work because no one would speak to me no one would speak to me in English except my boss Uh, now that was right up my alley at the time but for some people, that could be annoying. It's, 
the problem that I'm struggling with is that it's the level of stupidity of people in charge is yeah. shocking and appalling. Well, you guys will remember, I told the story on the air, and it's it's actually funny. I came across um, some episodes from this time period because I'm putting together a little compilation for our for our big finale next month. And I was listening to some bits from when I was working at the auto parts place last year. And there was like 13 aisles and 13 employees, and I revolutionized the system by saying, hey, why don't we all work in an aisle? <laughs> uh, instead of crawling all over each other all day how about we put one person in each aisle and then we're we just work together and do it and they were like no one had heard of this in it's the biggest auto parts company in the world and no one had ever suggested this uh so i i get where you're coming from is what i'm saying from the uh the the i think the upper echelons of the hierarchy in that in that sort of employment situation they just they don't care they're not paid to care they they're they're not paid to be smart they're just supposed to get get whatever their quota is completed and that's it that's all they need to worry about just what infuriates me is that like for the most part most of the people that are doing my job have been with the company for I think the shortest is like eight years. Like they've been with the company for a long time. I've been there for two weeks. Yes. And they're frustrated that I'm not working at the same capacity and speed as the rest of them. Uh yeah, I can see that. Um I haven't been on a forklift in nine years. Right. I've never been an order picker before, and I suffer from dyslexia of not just words and letters, but with numbers, which I was very upfront with when I got the job. Right. Now, to my one, I don't even know, he's not even my boss, but uh, to, to the one guy's credit, He's working with me to find something that'll work instead of me doing picking orders all day. I'll pick orders half the day, and the other time I'll help rearrange and organize some things, which is great because it's definitely needed to fucking happen. And it saves me from ripping somebody's fucking head off to getting that done because it's frustrating that it's not being done as it is, anyways. But right. it's just and it's, it's hard the, for a guy like you to. To realize, like, I can walk into a place, and if that shit's not being done, I, uh, that shit's not being done. It's not my job. Um, no, I that's you, you very... like to fix things. I just want things to run smoothly. It's just that simple. I just why why cause yourself stress? Yeah, oh, definitely. I don't understand why anybody would want to cause and live in chaotic stress when you can just solve the problem and be done with it. I, on the other I, hand, I don't... am very good at looking at my job and looking what I get paid and saying, well, <laughs> this is what I'm going to do for this amount of money. And if you want me to do that next thing, we have to renegotiate my compensation. But maybe there's a reason I'm a homeless bum with no citizenship or prospects and you're where you are. So maybe I can take a lesson from the Gord book. I'm only where I am because I'm lucky enough that my mother would still be willing to take me in. Yeah, it's the well, only reason I am where I am. Otherwise, I would have already be fucking homeless. So because I was heading there when I was in BC. So it is very cool. All of you people who have parents who parent them, I'm very jealous of that. Um, moving on to something that just blows my fucking mind. Uh. Because I just, I can't, I got nothing about Corona today. I don't care. I don't give a shit. Um, what, one thing that baffles me, just r some rough statistics that I kind of sort of did some math on. Um, my odds of becoming Prime Minister of Canada in 2023 are about 1 in 751,000. 
Huh? Uh, the odds of the Trans Mountain Pipeline ever being completed seem like they're probably just slightly less than that at the moment. <laughs> This fucking thing, which has been a thorn in my side since the day I started recording this stupid show, it's ballooned up to over twelve billion dollars from an, an initial cost of one and a half billion. We're at twelve billion now, and the same people who don't want it built and are crowding the streets and blocking bridges and stopping traffic to make sure this thing doesn't get built have delayed a hundred and fifty trains. In BC and Ontario, because the trains can't run because they're afraid of the protesters. So, what the fuck do these fucking kids want? If the oil doesn't go through the pipeline, it's got to go on the fucking train. That's the only way we transport oil. So, you're protesting the pipeline by stopping the trains. It, what the fuck is wrong with these people? Well, ironically enough, since you brought that one up, um, it turns out that one of the groups that are claiming they're from this particular, um, one of the um, uh, native... I, I'm not uh, even going to attempt to uh, pronounce their no. name, but yeah, they, it's... Uh, they are all standing up and saying, these protesters do not speak for us. They are not part of our tribe. They're not part of our band. They're not even, they're not even that, but they're actually, they, they've come up and that they, as these, um, I was reading an article earlier today, um, um, as these tribe members are talking to these protesters, they're finding out that they're American. Um, yeah. <laughs> they're from outside the province. <laughs> yeah, but they're protesting, they're... They're protesting the uh, both sides. Of it. They're stopping trains to protest pipelines. It, uh, they don't even understand what they're doing. No, not and at all. I, it's, it's no secret that they're professional protesters and they just go from protest to protest because they're fucking participation trophy growing up. Fucking These are 18 and 19 year old goddamn kids who are on a break from college and want to fuck up people's lives by making a stink about it. But they don't they don't care about what they're protesting. They're just protesting to win a fight. They don't care what fight they're winning. I, I would imagine half of them don't even know what they're protesting. They're just there to protest. Uh, I don't understand why we're allowing this to happen. Well, yes, I do. I know it's full well why we're allowing this to happen, but um, it's gotten so ridiculous. We... It's it's stifling our economy now. It's Our, our country is... is now losing a lot of money because of these pricks, and Beard doesn't seem to want to do anything about it. Um, he's not going to trample on anyone's right to protest, whether they're fucking Canadians or have a card in this game or not. Uh, John Horgan said he won't step in, because as much as it hurts him to see what's going on, with two fucking goddamn bridges shut down in Vancouver because of this crap, he says, oh no, I can't step in, that's not my job as as premier, uh, that's what the courts are for. <laughs> uh, where were the courts when you were on the other side of the fucking pipeline, idiot? Last year, this was your fight, and you were the one standing there protesting it until you lost, and then you said, okay, well, the pipeline's going to happen. And... Fuck. What the hell is wrong with everybody? The, the same just... guy... Oh, my God, Gord, you have no idea. Yes, you do. <laughs> Maybe some people don't. Have have just see how goddamn frustrating this is from to be in the province where this is going on and to have friends that are uh, financially as bad off as I am because they prepared to go work on this thing and they've been sitting there waiting for the green light for two goddamn years. And no one... No one is, is seeing logic here. No one's seeing what's really happening. And these First Nations people are suffering. They're standing up and no one's even listening to them. No one gives no, a fuck. Not no, at all. No one on either side of this fight has actually asked them personally, hey, what do you want? Uh, that the only Native people that protested the pipeline in the beginning were fucking paid by environmental companies. <laughs> 